In this first video on Christianity, we're going to have a look at the nature of the Christian God, okay? Now, this is a particularly easy um, topic to really cover because it's quite clearly uh, laid out the different um, attributes of um, God and um, his powers, his, his nature, shall we say. So, Christians believe the following thing about the nature of God. So, for a start... Christianity is a monotheistic religion. This means that there, oh, there is one God. Okay, let me just, there we go. There is one God. Okay. So, other religions might have multiple gods. However, in Christianity, we only have one true God. Okay. Now, the first one is God is omnipotent. Now, this means that God is all-powerful. All power. Full. Okay? I'm just going to do that. I don't care. Right. All-powerful. He can do anything. Okay? The second, omniscient, means he is all-knowing. He knows everything. Okay? He knows everything. The third, omnibenevolent, means he is all-loving. He loves everyone, no matter who they are. Uh, he loves his creation, okay? I will write these down in the bottom in a minute. So he is all-loving. Now, these two are quite interesting because they're technically contradictions to each other. But because God is omnipotent, then you can sort of see that he's uh, he gets around it, okay? So God is imminent, Imminent means he is with us, he is around us all the time, okay? But at the same time, he's also transcendent. And by transcendent, he means uh, it means above us, he's watching down, he's above us. So he's somehow both with us and not with us at the same time. However, because he's omnipotent, this, uh, this, we, we allow for this to, uh, to make sense. So here's, a little, here's that in a little bit more detail all the different uh, omni words so it's very easy to get these mixed up i tend to remember it omni omnipotent p powerful omnipotent so that's how i sort of remember that one um the um the two that were quite interesting omniscient here omniscient i used to always remember it as uh this bit uh, is a little bit like science, scient, science, and so uh, therefore, sort of looking at the idea of knowledge, and so therefore, knowing everything. It's quite, a, it's a weak link, but if it makes sense to you, then it's a good way of remembering it. Okay. There's also one that isn't here, which is uh, omnipresent. Okay, which is sort of um, ties in with God being imminent. So omnipresent, omnipresent. This is a very easy one to remember because present meaning with us. So he is uh, he is everywhere all the time, okay? And then omnibenevolent means he is all loving. Okay. Now, there are a few paradoxes when it comes to these attributes, okay? So, we can have a look at two of the main ones here, okay? So this is the uh, argument uh, of the stone, immovable stone, okay? So, it's looking at the idea of omnipotence, okay? So, can God create a stone he can't lift? Now, this is an interesting question. If he can't create a stone that he can't lift, then he's not omnipotent because he can't create it, also, but if he can create a stone that he can't lift, well, then he can't lift it, so he can't be omnipotent there. You see how that's quite an interesting uh, paradox. And it also uh, is something that isn't logically impossible. Isn't logically impossible. So, because a number of Christian uh, thinkers and just general philosophers uh, in history have said that God is all powerful, He can do anything, but He can do anything that's possible, but only things that are logically possible. 
Something that's logically impossible is something he can't do. So, for example, if I was to ask the question, uh, can God create a square circle? A square circle. Well, this is something that's logically impossible because the definition of a square and a circle don't fit together. You can't have a square circle because the definition of a square is almost the antecedent of the definition of a circle. They're, they're almost completely opposites, okay? So to say that God can create a square circle is meaningless. So therefore, we tend to say that God can create some, can do anything that is logically possible, okay? And this is an interesting one because the paradox of the stone he can't lift and if he can't create if he can't lift it then he's not omnipotent this is something that is still logically possible it doesn't it doesn't um it's not like you can't logically have a stone you can't lift uh, it's in the same way that you can you can't have a square circle for example another uh, less sound um argument is the called the inconsistent triad okay and it's effectively the problem of evil. So the idea is, if God is omnipotent and he's also omnibenevolent, so as we remember, if God is all-powerful, all-powerful, and also all-loving, okay, then why does evil exist in the world, okay? The idea being that a loving God would... Um, would want to prevent evil from happening in the in the world and also if he's all powerful then he physically can do that he has the ability to snap his fingers and prevent all evil in the world so why doesn't he why is they this inconsistent triad the idea of there being so evil and then uh, omnipotent omnipotent and then omnibenevolent ooh, ooh. The idea that these three concepts cannot um, exist together. Either, because evil definitely, uh, either we debate whether or not evil exists, which is, I mean, there are definitely examples where uh, someone's visceral response would be, that thing is evil, for example, okay? So it's pretty clear among thinkers that um, evil probably exists. So then you'll have to dispute one of these. Either God uh, does want to prevent evil, but he's not omnipotent and so therefore can't prevent it. Or God um, has the power to prevent it. He is omnipotent, but he doesn't love us in a way or isn't all loving. So he therefore cannot create, uh, he, he doesn't want to. He doesn't have the motivation to prevent evil. So this is quite an interesting little inconsistent uh, triad here. There are many, many, many other paradoxes that you can think of with these um, different... I mean, one for a start is how can God be both with us, um, imminent with us everywhere, but also above us watching over? Well, I guess the explanation you could say is he's, all, he's omnipresent, so he's actually in both places at the same time. A number of little inconsistencies here, but when we look at the nature of God, these are the main um, attributes that God um, has, okay? And if you ever take this to A level, then you will look in these in a little bit more detail and take an interest and have a look at these different um, paradoxes that arise from uh, the nature of God.